we had to take the interior structure out and we kept the skin of the building, right? And then we had to insert that concrete uh, structure, the new structure that we were introducing uh, back in there. So it's, 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 a, it's a surgical approach to, uh, to the building. The uh, Juan Flores house in Anurahan was constructed uh, pre-war period and uh, it also uh, has the elements of both the Spanish period and the American period. The Spanish method of construction, you have, the, there's a method called mampasteria and mampasteria is lime mortar encasing rubble sand and rubble. And the American period's uh, construction method really is just cement. So this house holds uh, architectural significance. It has its EFIT flooring and it also has the mampasteria walls. The one forest house brings the community, uh, it, it is a fabric uh, that ties in the whole community as a historic district. It, it doesn't stand alone it stands with all the other homes along the street of Inrahan. Uh, my name is uh, Richard Cruz Flores. I stay in the Juan's Nicholas Flores uh, house here at Inrahan. My dad is uh, Juan's Nicholas Flores. The house uh, is actually uh, built for my grandfather and his brothers. Um, my name is Lisa Provido and I'm an architect. Um, this is my partner, David Tan, who's also an architect and we have our own firm, uh, Provido Tan Jones Architects. Our firm was actually hired uh, to provide architectural design services as part of a preservation effort uh, to restore the Flores House. The um, underlying conditions were like, because when you see the Flores House initially, we thought, gosh, this is in pretty good shape, you know, I mean, looks like we can just do a little bit of re restoration and rehabilitation and we're done. But in fact, that actually wasn't the case because when we looked further into the, the building, it was actually very deteriorated. The, uh, the, it was termite infested. The floors were in pretty bad shape and um, the supporting structure underneath where, it, where the bodega is, the timbers underneath there were already uh, failing and so there were some areas on the floor which were supporting the flanks where there were just sort of some holes in there and they, the, the florists that were living in there, the family, they had to kind of walk around the, the holes and all that and so it's kind of wasn't very good living condition. The living conditions, especially the floor, it was already falling, it was really bad. Uh, I mean, the floor was already, there was something that was damaged, the wood, you know, everything, even the walls were cracking, our, our bathroom, the side of the wall was about to already fall out and so it was hard because I told him it's going to take a long time because you know how much material nowadays since it costs so we had a big storm I think it was typhoon year the ocean yes we do have problems here the floods the ocean uh, actually coming in so because of all that we decided that we were going to do a reconstruction effort rather than any of the other classifications. We had to establish a period of where, when to reconstruct to. We said, no, we, we're going to reconstruct it to like the 1930s. Really the hardest part, and this is, was really new territory, not only for us as architects, but also for the trust, is that we, we decided to do reconstruction. Because before that, um, most of the preservation efforts um, were rehabilitation and restoration. And so there are four classifications. One is preservation, then there's rehabilitation, you have uh, restoration, and the fourth is reconstruction. And so unlike the other three classifications, those um, had exemptions to build up to the existing code or the current codes today. That in itself um,
gave us the opportunity to also come in and make more of an interpretation of um, the kinds of things that we can do and for example like hardening the building um, making it so that it was typhoon and earthquake resistant we did several things because first of all the, the house itself was very low the bodega level was actually much lower in elevation than the street level basically the basement downstairs they called bodega was just mostly my dad would use it for storage we decided that we were going to raise the bodega level the level of the bodega was at least a little bit higher than the street level what that allowed us to do also was to um, make the bodega level uh, a usable space. Family could utilize the space for things other than storage. So we actually also not only raised the floor height, but we raised the, the ceiling height as well. So what you see today is the bodega level um, really being a space that the family can go in there and use and other than just being storage. We are blessed with the well preservation to rehab the house and now you can, it's actually living both uh, bottom and top now. I made a little uh, exercise room down there but it was kind of too low, but uh, didn't really help them. But <laughs> The other thing that we had to do, which was really important, was rather than going back in and just using the same wood frame um, system for the sloped roof, we actually uh, decided to create this concrete shell. The concrete was on the interior. Yes. And the, the tabiki the wall interior. and the <coughs> and posterior wall, we kept that at the exterior. So basically, I mean, the, you know, in the old days, they had the wood posts on the interior and the joists. We had to take the, the, the interior structure out and we kept the skin of the building, right? And then we had to insert that concrete uh, structure, the new structure that we were introducing, uh, back in there. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a it's a surgical approach to to the building. And by keeping the uh, main posterior and the tabiki wall on the outside, we were preserving the character of the house from from the urbanistic level. The the posts and the beams were all new; they were not new. That was the the basic structure or framing for the floor and then on top of that then we would put the wood plank flooring. The spacing mm -hmm. of the joists for the flooring was very important. We came back in later and then it reinstalled the original the fit plank flooring. So that was that was kind of um, exciting to see that happening. The new EFIT plank flooring you mm -hmm. could tell the difference just in the coloring and all that. You could just really make the com comparison between what's old and what's what's new. The Guam Preservation Trust, uh, because we are a very small organization, we look to the rest of the community to help us preserve the house. It is our vision uh, that everyone is responsible uh, for historic preservation. We're really blessed with the cement uh, structure. Now it's more uh, advanced and uh, I feel safe. I can have to save my. I can stay with the family here in Typhoon and not feel scared now. So I'm proud and happy. We, you know, my family, we're all blessed, and they're so happy to see the, the the outcome of the house. <laughs>